Create your own fish, morphology and function. In this video, you will be able to make a fish from your imagination. You will learn about the different functions and features such as body shape, tail shape, and mouth shape. This lesson was inspired by the Brooklyn Bridge Park Conservancy. We will be making our fish from salt dough. If you have Play-Doh or modeling clay, feel free to skip ahead. To create salt dough, you will need a mixing bowl, water, vegetable oil, flour, salt, and a measuring cup. Start by measuring out your ingredients. One cup salt, two and a half cups flour, one cup water, and two tablespoons of vegetable oil. This recipe yields about two fish. First, mix flour and salt. Next, add water while stirring. I use a spoon, but feel free to mix with your hands. When the dough is crumbly, add two tablespoons of vegetable oil. After you've added the oil, knead the dough until it is one mass. When it is one mass, wrap the dough so it doesn't dry out and refrigerate for about 30 minutes. Fish morphology and function. Check out this white perch. What features do you notice? How many fins does it have? I've outlined the fish so we could take a closer look. Here's a diagram of the distinguishing features of a fish. Keep these features in mind for later on in the activity. Feel free to print out this diagram as well as other documents on our website. Let's make a fish. My dad joined me in this activity today. First, let's start with the shape. Here are a few examples and their cross sections. Fusiform, which looks like a bullet or torpedo. Filiform, a more elongated shape. Depressiform, broad and flat. Compressiform, flat side to side and tall. My dad opted for a more fusiform shape when creating his body. Fusiform fish are fast swimming. They are often predators and can be found in open water. Some examples are tuna, swordfish, and salmon. I went for a more compressive form shape, which is flat from side to side. These fish are fast in short bursts of speed. They like to live among plants and narrow spaces. Some examples are butterfly fish, Manhattan, and angelfish. Next, we must select a tail. Here are some examples. Lunate, forked, truncated, rounded, and pointed. Can you think of any fish with these types of tails? I decided to go with a pointed tail. It allows my fish to maneuver through tight spaces and crevices. Since my fish body shape allows it to live in narrow places, I thought this tail would be a good fit. My dad created a lunate tail. This tail allows the fish to swim fast for a long time continuously. These fish can typically be found in the ocean. Some examples include tuna and swordfish. It's time for the mouth. Now that your fish has a body and a tail, I want you to take the time and think about where your fish might live. Is it open water? Maybe a reef? Imagine what your fish likes to eat. This will affect its mouth shape. We have a few mouth shapes to choose from. Superior, terminal, inferior, and tubular. I chose a tubular mouth. 
I really love finding seahorses in New York Harbor and was inspired to give my fish a similar mouth. This mouth shape means my fish will feed on small floating organisms such as shrimp and plankton. My dad chose a superior mouth. This mouth allows the fish to feed on prey that are swimming above it. This means his fish will likely be found swimming closer to the surface of the water to catch its prey. Remember this diagram? It's time to add the other external features of the fish. This diagram can be found in the Activities Associated Packet. We started with the dorsal fins, which are the ones on top of the fish. This fin acts similarly to a keel of a boat and aids the fish with stabilization. Next, we added the pectoral fins, which are found on either side of the fish, usually just past the gill cover. The fish uses these fins for locomotion. Here, my dad is adding a pelvic fin. These fins have various functions. Finally, we have the anal fin. This fin helps with stabilization and, in some cases, propulsion. My dad also added a barbel. This structure is sometimes used for taste and smell. Lastly, my dad used the back of the butter knife to create a scale texture for the fish. Please keep in mind, not all fish have scales, and scales come in all different shapes and sizes. I decided to cut my dorsal fin to have spiny rays. Sometimes these spines are poisonous to protect the fish. Just after the dorsal fin, I added the adipose fin. Next, I added the pectoral fins, this is usually paired on the opposite side, and underneath is the pelvic fin. It's also a paired feature. And lastly, the anal fin. I also added an exaggerated lateral line down the full length of the body. This line is used to help fish sense vibrations in the water. These vibrations could be predators, other schools of fish, and environmental obstacles. And finally, my scales. Color is a defense strategy, so let's think about the different situations our fish can be in. Based on shape and function, my dad's fish swims in open water and is probably a predator that eats fish swimming above it. So this fish would not want to be seen by fish above it. I think the best option for this fish is called countershading. Countershading is when the top of the fish is darker than the bottom. When the fish from above look down at my dad's fish, it blends in with the dark sea below. When a fish from below looks up at my dad's fish, they see a light belly which blends in with the lighter water towards the surface. Based on shape and function, my fish lives among small plants in narrow spaces or crevices and eats small floating organisms. I imagine my fish would live on a reef. This means it needs to protect itself from predators. First, I tried disruptive coloring. This is a cool form of camouflage. The fish has different colors or even stripes. These variations in colors and patterns help disrupt the fish's silhouette or outline, which makes it harder to distinguish. Another method that might work for my fish is called eye spot. This means my fish has a huge black dot as a fake eye close to its tail. This confuses predators. We can also see this method among moths and some butterflies. Lastly, I tried cryptic coloration. This is another form of camouflage. The fish has very similar colors to match its surroundings or backgrounds. Let's see the fish among some kelp. It would be hard for a predator to spot my fish, right? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this activity. I'd love to see some of your fish. Don't forget to tag hashtag BOP education. Have a great Earth Week and check out our website for more STEM education. 
please consider donating to Billion Oyster Project at bop.nyc donate.